the menstrual cycle. In this video, we're going to talk about the menstrual cycle, which is a set or a cycle of hormones that begins in females at puberty. Okay, we're going to talk about how it relates to negative and positive feedback mechanisms involving ovarian and pituitary hormones. So the menstrual cycle starts at puberty and it involves two different areas, as we said, the pituitary and ovarian hormones. So the pituitary hormones come from the pituitary gland, which is found in the brain. Okay, so the pituitary gland is in the brain, whereas the ovarian hormones obviously come from the ovaries, which you find attached to the fallopian tube, right? So that's kind of just to give you a perspective of where things come from. And the way that the cycle is divided or organized is that it is typically a 28 day cycle. Okay, so it's a 28 day cycle. And it is what controls menstruation, right? So when the hormonal levels control how, when the female releases a certain egg cell so that it eventually could potentially be reproduce, be used to reproduce, okay? So we're, the cycle starts with the release of the pituitary hormone FSH, okay? This stands for follicle stimulating hormones. And what FSH will do is that it will cause the development of an immature egg cell. So an immature an immature egg cell develops, okay? And the way that an immature egg cell develops is that it will grow in size, right? But it will also increase in its surround it's being surrounded by this cushion layer of what we call follicle cells, okay? just to give it into perspective. And this process is happening in the ovaries, okay? So the, the, the brain will release FSH and that's gonna cause this development. Now, what this causes is for the follicle cells to release estrogen, okay? So estrogen is released by these follicle cells. Therefore, you can say that FSH has a positive feedback mechanism on estrogen, right? Because it's stimulating its production. Now, what's this gonna look like on the graph? So if you look at this FSH level, day zero, by the way, is the beginning of menstruation, so the first day of bleeding. So FSH will increase in its level, right? Because it's being released by the brain. And as the level of FSH increases, that's gonna stimulate the production of more estrogen, right? Because you're developing more of these follicle cells. But estrogen, has a negative feedback mechanism on FSH. So when estrogen is released, that is going to block the pituitary from releasing more FSH, and therefore FSH levels go down. However, the estrogen levels are gonna keep increasing for a while because they are being released, it is being released by these follicle cells, right? So the estrogen level is gonna increase, increase, increase. And at a certain concentration of estrogen, and only at a certain concentration, estrogen will do positive feedback on LH, which means that it is going to stimulate the production of LH. And LH is what we call a luteinizing hormone, okay? So as the, the LH levels increases, LH is going to cause this, this um, developed follicle, right? So this, this mature egg cell that's now gotten loads of follicle cells, it's going to cause ovulation. It causes ovulation. Why is this important? Well, that's what we need in order for fertilization to eventually happen, right? So it releases the egg cell from the ovaries. So therefore you have what's called an LH surge. This pink line is just a spike in LH at around day 14, because that's when ovulation happens. But as this happens, simultaneously, the estrogen levels are gonna go down, right? Because the, the, you're breaking these follicle cells. These follicle cells were supposed to be releasing estrogen. And when LH causes them to kind of rupture, well, then estrogen levels will go down again. What else is this LH going to cause? It causes ovulation, but it also causes, causes the development of something called the corpus luteum. Corpus, which stands for body, luteum, which stands for yellow. Okay, so it's, it forms what we call the yellow body. And the yellow body is basically just a remnant of, or the, it's kind of like a, what's left over of these follicle cells. So the, the follicle cells will develop into this corpus luteum, which is just a different cell type. And the corpus luteum is basically just going to start 
um, releasing a new hormone, okay? So luteinizing hormone will cause the development or the, cause the production of a new hormone, progesterone. Because these, these uh, hormones, or sorry, this corpus luteum is releasing progesterone, okay? So when it's newly formed, it's releasing lots of this progesterone. And so the progesterone levels are going to start increasing in the, in the woman's bloodstream, right? However, this corpus luteum doesn't last forever. It's actually degrading over time, and it takes roughly 14 days for this corpus luteum to break down which means that the progesterone levels will first increase as the corpus luteum is forming, but then it's going to decrease. So why is this relevant? Well, it's because estrogen and progesterone are important in the development of the uterus, okay? So LH, or FSH and LH, are important in kind of building up and maturing the egg cell and then eventually ovul causing ovulation, but estrogen and progesterone, their role is to make the uterus ready to receive an egg cell. So in the first stage, where FSH is the main hormone from the pituitary gland, the, which is what we call the follicular phase, estrogen is building up the thickness of the uterus. Okay, It's building up the thickness. And in the second phase, what progesterone will do is that it will maintain the thickness of the uterus. Okay, It's going to keep it the same. This is in preparation for implantation because we've we've had this this egg released, right? And so if fertilization happens, we want this egg cell to be able to implant in the uterus. So that's why progesterone is going to stay mean, uh, keep the level constant. But then as progesterone falls, right, as this corpus luteum breaks down, progesterone levels go down, you stop this maintenance of the uterus, and therefore that's when you have ovulation, uh, sorry, menstruation. Because all menstruation is, is where the inner lining of the uterus, okay, is kind of shed out of the vagina. So when this process happens, when progesterone falls, that's why you have menstruation happening. And as menstruation happens well why does that restart the cycle well because progesterone has one very important other role it also does negative feedback on fsh so it is blocking fsh from being released from the pituitary gland okay because you don't want a new cell developing when you're still waiting and checking if whether a current one will implant so as progesterone levels fall you're going to lose inhibition of FSH. So FSH levels will increase, and then the cycle starts over, where FSH stimulates estrogen, which blocks FSH, which, and estrogen also produces LH, which produces progesterone, and progesterone then blocks FSH, and then the cycle keeps going. So you have to remember which hormones are released from the pituitary gland, which hormones are released from the ovarian, um, oh, it's for, sorry, from the ovaries, you have to remember which thing does positive feedback on what and then why, why it is that we have these, these follicles developing, this endometrium or the uterus developing, and the pituitary hormones as well as ovarian hormones, their levels in the bloodstream.